Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 14th, 2019 edition of the Sand Sonnet Storm Sonnet Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. A few weeks ago, developers patched a use after free vulnerability in the Linux kernel that could lead to remote command execution using some specifically crafted TCP packets. Details regarding this vulnerability hadn't been released until now. Apparently, it does affect the RDS TCP kill socket implementation. Now, it's usually a use of to clean up the namespace after a connection is being terminated. Not terribly clear how this would be exploited. It's also not really likely to be exploited according to the release and there is no proof of concept available at this point. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Apply patches as they come out. Any Linux kernel before 508 is likely vulnerable. And then we got uh, two new vulnerabilities in Cisco's iOS XE. Now, the first one of these vulnerabilities is sort of your standard web application vulnerabilities. A user that's logged in as administrator to the web UI is able to execute arbitrary code as root on the device. Even the administrator isn't really supposed to do this. Now, what makes this sort of a big deal is the second vulnerability. The second vulnerability allows a user logged in to the device as a root to actually bypass the Cisco Trust Anchor module. Also known as TAM, this proprietary hardware security module is in charge of actually making sure that the firmware then being loaded on the device as its boot is authentic. But apparently Cisco didn't implement this module correctly, so the result is that a root user is able to modify this trust anchor module, essentially defeating it. So chaining these two vulnerabilities together, an attacker that has gained admin access to the device via the web UI could remotely defeat this trust anchor module and with that gain persistent access to the device by modifying the firmware. And of course, it would be very difficult for a user to identify this compromise because, well, that's exactly what this trust anchor module is actually supposed to do. Cisco has released a software update that fixes the web UI issue. At this point, there is no software update available for the trust anchor module problem. Cisco in its advisory states that an update may become available in the future. The company discovering these vulnerabilities has unfortunately used the label Thrangry Cat in order to identify these issues. And Facebook released an update for WhatsApp that fixes a remote code execution vulnerability that apparently has already been exploited in the wild in order to install spyware on mobile devices that were using WhatsApp. The vulnerability is linked to malformed secure real-time transport protocol or SRTP packets. If they are parsed by a vulnerable version of WhatsApp, then remote code execution might take place. The SRTP protocol is essentially an encrypted voice over IP protocol that's supposed to prevent eavesdropping. And US CERT provides a brief analysis report about some of the mistakes that users are making as they are migrating their organization to Microsoft Office 365. Top of the list, one of my favorite multi-factor authentication. We do see an awful lot of phishing going on and some pretty good phishing against uh, Outlook 365 and other cloud provider accounts like it. So two-factor authentication is certainly a must. If you have recently implemented Outlook 365 or using it in general, you want to take a look at this very quick and brief list that you assert came out with. 
And if you remember the numerous information leaks in the HNAP protocol, you may not be surprised that its sort of successor, the JNAP protocol, isn't really doing much better. As reported by Bad Packets, a number of Linksys devices are apparently exposing JNAP to the public without authentication. This access can be used to gather information about these devices, like for example, a list of all the MAC addresses connected in the past to the particular device. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.